everyone and welcome to Rhyme Entertainment Showcase, the BFI London Film Festival 2020 special, interview special. So today we are interviewing producers April and Sarah of such an amazing movie, Rose, A Love Story. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, you know, I mean, looking at the script, obviously, when you first saw the script, what was it about the film that kind of drew you to produce it? Mm, good question. <laughs> um, for well, it was it was really how easily the script, like how easy it was to read. I mean, it like Matt's written, he wrote such a beautiful script right at the beginning that we just read it from start to finish. And I've said this in another interview, but like the landscape really felt like another character, the world that they were in as well. And without giving too much away, it, it just has a very clever twist and take on things that I don't think we've seen um, in cinema for a while. Um, and from a logistical point of view, it was also like doable, you know, on the budget we had, because it was mostly one location, two actors, um, and we just jumped the chance really. Yeah, yeah. Because awesome. I, I can totally understand, obviously, from the first scene, it was like there was something going on, like, you know, in terms of seeing Rose at the beginning, and you could see you know, she wasn't, I guess, I don't know if you could say she wasn't quite right, but there was just something, <laughs> something um, going nigg on. Yeah, niggling <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. You were just kind of pulled into to where what's going on. Yeah. Why is he locking, you know, so precise in locking that door? And, you know, so it did pull you in from, from straight, straight at the beginning, wanting to know more. So I thought that was great. Thank you. Yeah, and it does go on those twists and turns. Like, again not giving away too much but the characters really aren't what they are yeah. set up as mm. as it unravels there's lots of twists definitely yeah. yeah how about yourself april yeah i mean for for me it, it, that subtlety so like you said you're looking at you're looking at one thing or you're being set up for what people might consider especially in the cult program this is a horror mm. and then um, and then you are quite caught off guard not in a jumpy way in a way you're like wait a minute they're in love how is what's going on exactly. um, for Sarah and myself what what we found that we really enjoy as producers is is uh, projects which are balanced between those two genres uh, we like to produce Things where you can't pigeonhole us um, and I think, yeah. yeah and I think now we're in 2020 and you've got a vacuum of content everywhere um, you've got to you've got to start not treating your audiences like idiots and go here you go here's two genres deal with it exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah no I love that and I thought that was done brilliantly um, again I mean our follow-on question from that actually it fits in really well to that last part you were saying how difficult was it to not go in that traditional style of, you know, almost a um, vampiric or zombie-like sort of style of filming? Because you've got your traditional stories there and this isn't, which is, um, again, without giving anything away, it's so different to that. So how, did, how difficult was it to not go down that route? I don't think we can take any credit there, can we, sir? <laughs> I, I don't. I was going to say it, it really was Jen, Jen and Martina's discussion in terms of how they shot it. Yeah. Um, I know that the discussion was, like a lot of the scenes between the two of them were directed as like drama, you know, or like domestic sort of scenes. Yeah. And yeah. then... Uh, but then they shot it like a horror, as in they built in all of that tension, mm. long shots, pauses. You know, Jen's um, spoken to us about like how she deliberately had blank bits of space and and uh, that bit of on screen where you're not really sure what's there, you know, like darkness, because we didn't have a lot of natural light. Yeah. So she... So between her and Martina, there was like ongoing discussion about that. And I think the tension between the two is what works really well. And it's again, that, that two genre thing. Um, but early edits uh, were, were less 
scary, like less horror (laughs) and um, sort of built that and wove that back in, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that journey of the edit. You're not really sure. When we first had it, it was like, I'm quite scary scary enough. There's not something working here. um, It's definitely Kato's music. um, Yeah. And um, and the sound design. That's where you can really ramp up the horror. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, obviously, both you ladies had a vision when you obviously read the script to begin with and, and seeing the end result, how different was it in terms of, you know, your vision at, to at the, the end, at the beginning yeah. To, yeah. to seeing the end? Oh, it's always so, it's always so different to how you first imagine it. But I find that on every project. The script that you read is never the script that you perform and it's never the script you edit. It's like it changes every time because it gets into different hands. You know, it's like the writer's hands, then the director's hands Mm -hmm. and then the editor's hands. And it kind of gets passed through and and does, as as I said before, evolve and go on a journey. Like, I have to also talk about Matt and Sophie um, and their vision because they're also producers on this um, along with Rob from the development partnership so mm-hmm. it was a real collaboration um, of minds and you know Matt had a vision as a writer mm-hmm. and then obviously he's in it as well as an actor but they their, their production company um, Bone Garden were also sort of working with us as well mm-hmm. um, yeah. so it, it was just an ongoing discussion I think all the way through of how that film evolved and it uh, I personally feel like it's never the same script that you pick up I I think Matt would agree with that too don't you think Apes it's like it just it just became something and and in many ways better than when you first read it um but it's hard with budget (laughs) constraints because sometimes those things aren't what you imagine when you're shooting them and then you find a way to adapt and make it make it what it is yeah yeah Matt, though, Matt, Matt and Sophie it, it's not actually uh it's not a case of us imagining something up they were so sure of that world they were so clear and not only was it on the on the page but when you when you discuss it with them because they were such a they were a collaborative duo and they were talking to another duo mm-hmm. that um, and that it actually t- kind of made our jobs a little bit easier because we go right this is actually what you want we're not okay <laughs> cool. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's great that it's that collaboration that yeah, it's kind of definitely. Together and made it as amazing. And I guess, uh, yeah, our job as producers is to facilitate that, right? Especially that's when you've got that, when you've got someone like Matt, who's producer, writer, actor, Sophie, who's producer, actor, you know, and then just, like, it's us, it's our responsibility to sort of service them. And so, yeah. you know, even with the location at the beginning, it was like, ta-da, what do you think it is? <laughs> I hope you like it. We yeah. think it's perfect. Are we on the same page about this? So it's constantly having those conversations as you go along. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think, yeah, definitely in terms of that vision, I think that journey is so important to have and just the teamwork. And you can see that in the film as well, that there's so many amazing brains that have been put together to produce this again, where you've had, you know, um, a low budget to, to work with, you know, smaller locations and, you know, a very small team of actors, but it's just brought such a great production and it just shows that you don't have to have so many millions behind a movie. You can actually, as long as you've got the, the, capa- the, the mental capacity to bring it together with a good team, I think, again, you've done brilliantly. Thank you. I think that's also where, you know, the years of us doing short films and building up our contacts really come into play because that we have to thank, you know, the kit companies that gave us the discounts for what, and the kit should have been a lot more, the crew that worked for a lot less than their day rate, like everyone brought something to the table um, in every department, you know, from Matt and Sophie and the execs and everyone all the way down to the crew and, and, yeah. and us. And so that is what, I guess, raises the standard of the film. Yeah. You know, the budget that you show it for, I don't think it's anywhere near what it's actually, it's true value is and it's worth because we just yes. smiled yeah. sweetly and pulled in a lot of favours. <laughs> <laughs> As is indie filmmaking. Yeah. <laughs> All people who, um, like we said, that we we met them on shorts, we met them on smaller shoots, mm-hmm. and there were a lot of our friends and family involved to, to yeah. work 
And what happens is we're given these guys, we all started out at the same place and, and we're all giving each other a chance to, to jump up. And now that, you know, now we're friends, everyone's just championing everyone. We want the best. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all our locations that we filmed in locally, like all the locals were lovely. We had a local driver, like, you know, Mary, who owns all the cottages, like, and her and her family, like, we just couldn't have done it without them all doing it for what, the money they did it and the and bringing enthusiasm to the table because, um, yeah. yeah, everyone was sort of part of that process. So, so I guess really, you know, it, you know, the film called Rose, a love story, is kind of it a really love is. story of yeah. communities coming together. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. April and Sarah are exhausted begging somebody <laughs> to, to help them out for free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So in terms of the feedback, so now, you know, BFI of, you know, we premiered it and now um you know the reviews are coming in what has what's the feedback been like what sort of uh, what's the response like so far yeah really good <laughs> like yeah. not that we're shocked but i mean kind of you just never expect it it's your debut feature um it, it's made it all worthwhile uh, being snowed in in the middle of wales and sharing a bed with sarah for a month um, <laughs> saying, we, we did share a bed for a month Wow. We didn't have the money for two rooms. <laughs> there was Sarah and I, the DOP, Martina and, and director Jen, we, we saw the premiere together mm -hmm. um, and it was, it, it was like being nervous as though you were at a press night for a play. I was worried that one of them was going to forget a line and then as soon as it goes, it was that realisation yeah. that um, it, it could just flop. It's not, it's not a short film. Like, it's really hard to be mean to a short film. That's like being mean to a puppy. We've got a full dog here now. Yeah. Um, well, that's going, that's a new metaphor. <laughs> I love it. I love it, yeah. yeah. I'm going to quote you on this one yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was on social media throughout. And then as soon, the minute after the film finished, it went boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and it's been overwhelming. It, it's yeah. actually what I was saying to my mum earlier. I said, it's the people have picked out things which we just never could have articulated it in the same way because we were way too close to it but someone saying that actually it's it's a, it's a portrayal of um as someone with chronic illness it was like yeah definitely yeah. yeah and yeah and you forget as you go along like that every single scene that we watch we, you know we remember the moment on set the thing that happened with the piece of kit the the I uh, like yeah. it was snowing heavily outside and like you yeah. know someone got a car stuck in the ditch like it's really hard to remove yourself from every single scene and scenario yeah. of like how, what, what it led up to that like sort of moment shooting it and it's also really hard when you've like read the script then you've shot it all then you've watched it like a million times yeah. honestly didn't know if it was good or not anymore couldn't tell <laughs> was like, fine, I don't yeah. know what people are gonna think of this and I think <laughs> that's the thing like Matt and Sophie was so close to it and Jen's been so close to it because Jen edited quite a lot of it as well we had another editor but she is from an editing background she's a professional editor so all of us you go through this journey and you kind of really hope and think it's good but you just don't know anymore yeah. so yeah. <laughs> it's really but nice to we have. We gave it five stars. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you yeah. it means so much yeah. like it really I means mean, so much. We watched it. it was like this film is so cool and so romantic at the same yeah. time. <laughs> it's exactly what we love to watch so. Oh thank you yeah. honestly it's yeah. just like over the moon for all those reviews and your review thank you. Oh, you're, yeah, welcome. you're welcome. <laughs> but I also think like um, talking about Amber's character when she came in like almost yeah. like I kind of knew there was another character that was going to come in but it was like when she did it was I just wanted at the beginning I wanted her to go because I enjoyed the the romance between um you know Sam and Rose, Sam and, Rose. Yeah. Mm. and then but then she added a lot more to the, the film in terms of she was asking the questions that were kind of revealing it to the audience you know something so simple at the beginning I noticed obviously the cutlery hanging out and and the discs and she actually asked the question that I was thinking in my head earlier on so it was almost like she was that, yeah. the audience's answer you know to kind of 
put everything together. Yeah, to the mysteries of it. Yeah, and that is her dev- that is her purpose as a character. She comes in with this new energy yeah. and drops their little world. And it's it is that satisfaction as an audience, you know, it's so cleverly written and then yeah. and then shot and the production design where you pick up on all those little parts of their world that she then challenges. And I even had a discussion with my friend the other day about that big end scene, you know, without giving too much away, mm-hmm. she pushes and asks all those big yes. questions. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And we're shouting, yeah, at we're the, sharing at the screen. Yeah. Not pushing them. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, she's great and Olive was great. <laughs> She just yeah. had that punch. Olive, yeah, she was she was a breath of fresh air. But what's so nice about that character and why I think that casting is so interesting and clever is that um, that's not the kind of character you think is going to bulldoze a horror. Um, and then you kind of go in, wait a minute, is, is she going to do something or are they going to do something to her? And it's like, yeah, it's, yeah an interesting yeah. dynamic. Yeah, because mm. she had... Um, part of her character, she was quite, you know, feisty and like very demanding and almost saying, no, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do very that. Stubborn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the next, she was like a sweetheart. She was an angel. You, you kind of saw it from her point of view and she was like a delicate flower. So, you know, it was good that she had two sides to her as well as, you know, the story evolving, yeah. the story continuing, obviously with Rose and Sam there, um, story and how their characters were evolving mm. so mm. yeah all three of them I thought was amazing yeah yeah mm-hmm. excellent so next question what's in store what's next for the further promotions of this uh, amazing movie uh so it's interesting um we 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 didn't attach ourselves to a sales agent or mm-hmm. um, distributor at this stage. Uh, as we know, 2020 has been a bit of a curveball. Mm-hmm. And we really wanted to take it slowly. We, you know, we premiered at LFF for a reason. We wanted to, it's, the film's been ready since the start of the year. Yeah. Um, and we were just like, come on, LFF, please. Yeah. Uh, so we really wanted to enjoy this moment. Um, and then conversations are being had and a release date will happen, if not soon, in the new year. Um, we're just kind of not in a, in a rush right now. You know, the, the landscape, all the cinemas are shut. You know, everything's bottlenecking. So we want to find the right partner in crime rather than just getting it out there. We- yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good idea. Again, timing is everything. So making sure it's the right time and enjoying this journey to when when that time is right would be perfect. I reckon it could be an anti-Valentine's Day film. Yeah, that's a fun twist, right? And uh, yeah, and quite a few other festivals have have reached out and got excited. So we're just just waiting to see. Playing the field a little bit. Right, enjoy (laughs) it. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Don't put your eggs in one basket, (laughs) just spread them around a bit. Yeah, I love it. Oh, that's excellent. So, yep, go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just um, just coming back to the film, obviously not giving too much away. Can you give us an insight into, obviously, um, how, you know, Sam and Rose's character developed? Because, you know, obviously the actors really um, captured the, the love between Sam and Rose. And they were just like, to, to us, they were just like a normal couple, everyday couple, who were trying to, to live the best that you know they could, as normal as they could. But obviously with this situation going on, I mean, how easy was it for them to capture this? Obviously, I know you've mentioned that they worked very closely on the whole production and, and behind the scenes, but can you tell us more about that? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, they're a couple in real life. Okay. okay. Yep. So they. That came naturally. It, was pretty easy. <laughs> it yeah. came very naturally. Yeah. I mean, we just, again, just have to say kudos to, to Matt and Sophie. Like, I think to have. Uh, to have a pair who are the actors and the writer and also producers as well, mm. like, they're so invested in it. Yeah. Um, and they really care. I mean, I would say across the board, everyone in this, like, involved in this film just really cares about it. And mm-hmm. so 
<laughs> got free rehearsals at home because <laughs> the actors are just it's exactly. their film and, yeah. and you know it's Matt's writing and and the rewrites that they did they worked very closely with Jen um to go back and forth and chat it through when they had new ideas and it was just a lot of excitement and care and I think that it I just have to sort of Mm. They, it was really them you know yeah, it, was, yeah. it was Matt and it was Sophie working on it and then in the room they were just present and yeah brought it very quickly um and so it that was just a joy really we were just very lucky to have that chemistry between the two of them yeah yeah definitely that's amazing yeah so I think that's why a lot of the lines are very natural because it's like Matt is right there with Sophie that I I mean I can't talk for them but I'm sure they probably read it aloud at home and talked through each, you know and had all of that sort of yeah that stuff that you would do in a workshop yeah. yeah the script was real and, and mm. I think that's yeah that's a really important thing because yeah. it helps to bring it alive and you know again you can resonate with the thoughts and feelings and of that and you know and I think that's such an important point yeah great love it mm -hmm. okay so in terms of new projects coming up, is there anything in the pipeline to keep us more anticipating of, uh, of you, you both or even as a part of the whole production team? Mm. Um, so, uh, COVID, as in, uh, there's... <laughs> <laughs> the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah slowed everything down we have uh we have two more features on our slate um what one in fact is a horror comedy written by uh, nat lertzema who's incredible and again love into balance between those two lines and uh the other is is a drama a play adaptation um directed by christian cook and these two people are people we've done short films with um as proof of concepts and that's that's kind of how we like to work, you know. We test mm -hmm. out the team like we did with Rose, and then elevate together. Um, yeah, I didn't go with that. yeah. And, um, uh, and yeah, and we also have a couple of shorts in in the pipeline. We love shorts. I think yeah. the more they're getting the praise they deserve, and they're becoming yeah, definitely um, in a real prestigious place. And the likes of Amazon Prime are picking them up now, and we, we've got five of ours on there. But we, we do love them. It gives us a chance to work with new directors. It gives us a chance to stretch our creative muscles mm -hmm. and um, also try out new voices, things we haven't seen on the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's yeah. where we're at as a company. Yeah. And I just think after everything, you know, the excitement again arose and everything that's happened, it's like... We've learned so much since we shot Rose. And mm -hmm. now even Apes and I were talking the other day, it's like, we're so ready to shoot the next feature. Um, and those two in, that are in development are quite far along in development, which is great. Um, so it's more about when the financing comes, all sort of lines up, you know, for the next one. Yeah. But we just have learned so much that I'm so excited about doing the next one now. Cause I'm like, oh, we wouldn't do that. We do it like that, <laughs> we do this. It's just like, you just keep growing, you know, it's more like you keep practicing. <laughs> and also it's like that film buzz, isn't it? You know, you're yeah. done a production, you've got to post production, you've seen the release. Let's do the next one. Oh yeah, you're like, oh, I'll do it all again now. I'm happy exactly, to do it yeah. again. Whereas at the time you're like, oh my god. Oh yeah, that time. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> there were days when we were like, oh my god, I'm so tired. <laughs> that caffeine coming in. Yeah. 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 Fifth coffee of the day. Done the night shift. Yeah, totally. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah, it's just so worth it. I mean, the end result has been amazing. Yeah. Um, Kudos yeah, you. you know, I mean, we could sit here and keep praising and praising the film. <laughs> oh, you're so <laughs> sweet. Thank you. Yeah, and, you know, we're just going to encourage people, you know, as it comes out and to the general public, is yeah. definitely to keep an eye out for it. Yeah. And please let us know of any, you know, any upcoming festivals projects, or yeah. any new projects that come out. We'd love to know and obviously share that with our viewers. Wicked, we will do. Thank you. Amazing. Well, so where can our viewers find out more about the film? Is there a website or is there any any other sort of 
areas that we can go to. I'll leave that to April. She's the social media queen. Go for it, April. <laughs> Head of marketing and social media, April Kelly. So there's, there's plenty of companies involved. Um, what with Bone Garden, Bone Garden Films, there's Relevant Partnership, Field Parks, Great Point Media, all these people are involved. Um, and they've all got websites. But in terms of mini productions, you can find Rose as a portfolio with images, information, reviews trailers, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's miniproductions.co.uk. And for all social uh, news and stuff, you can find us on Twitter, which is mini underscore prods, or Instagram, mini underscore prods. And we're on Facebook as well. But yeah, we, we always channel everything into our company rather than setting up different accounts because yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, too much to manage. <laughs> <laughs> and normally just our own socials retweeting it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm worse at social media than April, so she just nudges me, she tells me to retweet her posts, and I'm like, great. <laughs> yeah. Almost like yeah, us. That's like us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she sets up mini productions and I just retweet and pretend that it's my own work. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being guests on this BFI LFS special. Um, again, we wish you much success with Rose and um, A Love Story and also any upcoming projects. And you've definitely got our support and we can't wait to hear more um, in terms of your, your next lineup of features and shorts. Brilliant. Thank you, thank you so much for having us both. Thank You're you. Welcome. Take, Take care. care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.